This is our lab, where we're going to put our bodies to the test to show you how your body works. Ah, that really hurts. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Today, we're looking at breathing. Take a deep breath. OK, you can try that at home. Breathing is absolutely essential to make our bodies work, and it's something we do without even thinking about it. But why? How do our lungs work? And what is it that makes us breathe? What are you doing? What I've got here <laughs> is the innards from a pig. I know it looks like a meat counter, but one of the things I've got here is a pig's lung. So have a look and see if you can figure out which one it is. Have you worked it out? Why don't you show us, Sand? I'm going to inflate the lung. That bit. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> the pig breath. That's great. You blow at the pig, and the pig blows back the blue, at you. The blue right back. It's quite weird. Keep blowing. I've got. I've got something I want to show. So you keep breathing in and out. A pig's lung works in exactly the same way as ours. When you breathe in and out, what's happening is you're taking oxygen out of the air and you're breathing out carbon dioxide, which is a waste gas. It's just like a car's exhaust pipe. So the inside of your lung is actually like a sponge. It's got millions of little air spaces in it called alveoli. And it's inside these alveoli where oxygen is absorbed and is sent to wherever it's needed all over your body. These little pockets inside the lung have a huge surface area. The bigger the area, the more oxygen that can be absorbed. That's the really important things about the lung, is these air spaces. It's the surface area that they give. And, in fact, if you spread out all the alveoli, it would have the same surface area as a tennis court. So, we know that when you breathe in, your lungs take oxygen from the air for your body. And when you breathe out, you expel the harmful carbon dioxide that your body doesn't need. But what happens in your body when you hold your breath? Let's find out. So, this machine is called a capnometer, and it's going to measure the carbon dioxide that Zahn's breathing out through here, and it's also going to shine a laser through his finger and measure the amount of oxygen in his blood. The carbon dioxide level's about five, and his oxygen levels are about 95%, both of which are normal. Now I'm going to hold my breath. No, now you should hold your breath. I said I'm going to hold my breath. Just hold your breath. So at first, nothing much changes, apart from the fact that the machine thinks you're dead. <laughs> Don't worry, on, you're not dead. But the machine thinks you're dead because it's not detecting you breathing out anymore. You've got enough oxygen in your body for about five to ten minutes of life. But Zand isn't going to make it nearly that long because the rising levels of carbon dioxide in his blood are going to make him absolutely desperate to breathe. That's because it's the carbon dioxide build-up in your blood that tells your body to breathe before your oxygen runs out. All right, on my count, I want you to breathe out slowly through the machine. Go. In Zahn's last breath, he had high levels of carbon dioxide, but his oxygen levels never really went that low. So although the machine shows that Zahn's oxygen level is almost normal, his carbon dioxide level has risen significantly. So what we see from this is that long before I was going to run out of oxygen, the rising carbon dioxide levels in my blood were forcing me to breathe. So you can breathe easy knowing that your body is working hard to look after itself by getting rid of all that carbon dioxide and sending all the good stuff, oxygen, around your body. Ouch. We're all out and about! Scott in the woods! Have you got a question for me? With our ouch bleepers, ready to answer your medical queries. You have earned an ouch sticker. Ooh. Nice to have time to catch up on some reading. Stop it. Song, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Oh, time to go! Our first brain teaser is from Pippa. She's in hospital getting treatment for a stomach condition. What's your question? How does your brain control your body? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I want to know how my brain controls my body itis. I'd like to know how your brain works, Aunt. That is a lovely question, Pippa. So if I reach for a cup of tea with my right hand, it's the left side of my brain that does it. And that starts in a place in my brain called the motor cortex. That sends a signal down my spinal cord, along my nerves, to my muscles, allowing me to reach out. And the other very important part is that my body sends messages back to my brain from my eyes seeing where my hand has gone so that I know when to stop and grab the cup of tea. 
Why don't you use your brain to give me an operation out sticker? A sticker? It's a very good idea. Question answered. Bye. Bye. It's your turn to answer a question now, Ronks. And it's from Logan, who's having chemotherapy for leukaemia. You've got a question for me. Why are veins always blue? What's the diagnosis, dog? That sounds like a case of, I want to know why veins are always blue. Itis. It does. Blood that contains oxygen is bright red, but blood that doesn't contain oxygen is dark, dark red. But our veins are blue. And that's to do with the science of light. Light contains all of the colours of the rainbow. Light comes down, travels to our skin, the red light is absorbed deeper and the blue light is reflected by the skin into our eyes. And that's why our veins, although they contain blood, which is dark, dark red, appear blue. Mm -hmm. That was a brilliant question, Logan. Would you like a sticker? Yes. See you later. Bye. Get a move on, Chris. Jace wants to ask you a question. He has a condition that means he sometimes finds it hard to breathe. I've got tracheobalacia. What is it and will I grow out of it? What's the diagnosis, Doc? It sounds to me like Jace has a case of I've got tracheomalacia, what is it, and will I grow out of it itis? Is that right? Yeah. So, Jace, your trachea is also known as your windpipe, and it's a tube that carries air from the back of your mouth down into your lungs. And in most people, it's kept open because it's a tube with rings of cartilage around it. But in some people, those rings of cartilage don't quite develop properly. So, in you, if you run around, it might become a bit difficult to breathe if the trachea collapses a bit. But the good news is, usually, it gets better as you do more exercise as you get older. Jace, have I answered your question? Yes. Well, you have earned yourself an ouch sticker. If you don't mind, I'm going to put it on your trachea. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. That's it for today. Clinic closed.